Hi everyone, how are you today? My name is Sheila Landry from TallPaintingDesigns.com and today we're going to do a project that I call Heavy Metal Owl and I call him that because he's done in all of the deco work, beautiful metallic paints and he looks shiny and metallic and fall and um, he's going to be really fun and easy to paint. Um, the way that I'm going to do him is by doing some undercoating. This is kind of the theme of this lesson is to undercoat things and then you can brush these sheer metallic paints over them to get a nice shimmery effect. Okay, so um, for the piece I, I'm doing this class for Tolltown, tolltown.com. The link will be, um, you know, in my descriptions in that because I, I assume um, most of my videos wind up on YouTube, but this is going to be for the um, September class for 2020, and then it'll go on YouTube. And for the project, I'm using one of my own surfaces that you can get on my site this is uh i call these um self-framing pieces because they're one piece that i cut the inside on a bevel and it allows the center piece to push back and the outer end to create a frame so um they make a real nice plaque and and ornament and stuff like that it gives a little bit more dimension and you can pop them out you can glue them together before you start painting but i like usually gluing them afterwards um and i'm going to have a kit up there i do already and i sell the pumpkin with the little leaves you can use this for any project you want so if you want the um surface or to look at my other surfaces you can go to my tollpaintingdesigns.com website and everything is there and um the pumpkins out of quarter inch mdf and the accenting leaves are out of eighth inch birch okay so I used wire to add the leaves and make them fun and you can put little charms if you want and um, I used on this piece the bottom is Floracraft diamond dust which is actual glass shards for glitter so it's gorgeous it's you can dye this with um, alcohol ink I've done that before and it's really kind of cool but I decided to leave it white for now I may wind up dyeing it and trying some black and I keep it tight because um, it is glass it's very sharp so I put a lot of glue and I put a heavy layer on my sample and you could see it it's a little bit cloudy and I'm not sure I love that look so um it's okay though it's pretty it still shines and what I might do on the next sample that I'm going to do with the video is use a different deco art brush on glitter. And we'll see the difference at the end. I'll show you the two. Okay, and the paints that I'm going to be using are deco art American acrylics. And I'm using some of their glamour dust for the pumpkin because it gives a it, it's a very fine glitter and you can see it just gives a shimmer on it unlike the big chunky glitter and it allows all your shading to show through so that's nice and then all the metallics for the um, leaves and the bird and everything else are going to be done in deco arts extreme sheen metallics which i absolutely love they came out with these a couple years ago and they expanded the color line i think last year and they're semi-transparent, which is why we're going to undercoat things. But they give the best, most beautiful sheen of any of the metallics that I've used. So um, I use them almost exclusively. But you could see here on the leaves even, um, I had shaded underneath first. And then I brushed on the extreme sheen. And you can still see the shading through it. But you get the really nice metallic look to it. So... I will show you how to do all that and um, 
we'll get started in a minute okay so I will be back soon and I will show you how to begin okay we're ready to start our project now um, I'm not going to be showing every single you know stroke that I'm painting because a lot of it is redundant and a lot of it is basic stuff and any of you who have ever had my patterns know that I go pretty thoroughly into everything and even beginners should be able to paint um, my patterns so I'm just gonna mainly show us the basic steps and get us going and then I'll break off and go to the next part so that you're not stuck sitting here for you know three hours watching me paint things but you'll get the general idea of course and if you have any questions there's always contact information so you could ask me so what I did is I cut the center for my pattern out and I started with the MDF pieces and I, I started doing the undercoating. And unlike base coating, undercoating goes before the base coating. I call it undercoating. This is kind of my own terminology and how I think it should be used. And usually when I use MDF, I do like to undercoat um, the pieces that have lighter or brighter colors. Because the MDF comes in many colors, as you well know. And even though this is on the lighter side, this is the highest grade I can get, it's still a little dull. And if I wanted to put this, I use bright orange for the, um, for the pumpkin. And if I want this to look as bright as it does, it's a semi-transparent color and either I'm going to wind up having to put four or five coats on it to make it look good and it's still going to look dull or I can take the time and undercoat it with a neutral tan or this is, this is buttermilk. That I use. I typically use buttermilk or light buttermilk. Um, I usually have eight ounce bottles of these neutral colors and it doesn't really matter. Um, you know don't get hung up on having to have the exact color. You could use white if you want. I think white is a little starker and that the buttermilk and those light ivories and all that um, they're a little bit warmer. So what I did was um, I separated my pieces this is why I like to paint before I glue together like I said I know some like Amy um, Magish who works with me a lot she likes to glue her pieces first but usually her frames are the same color as her centers so it's a lot easier but for me it's so much easier to not have to fuss around that edge and get worry about getting my black you know with buttermilk and everything like that so um, I applied, I think I did two coats and then I used a very fine sandpaper and I knocked off the raised grain. You could feel it gets rough because um, MDF is a fiber board so anything that you put water base on it is going to make it swell a little bit. And the acrylic and the, and the paint and the binders, once they dry, they kind of freeze those fibers into place. So by putting two coats on, two thinner coats, it's going to feel a little bit bumpy and you're going to raise that grain, but you're going to lock it into place. So if you take a, a very fine sandpaper and just skim sand it off to get it smooth again, then when you put your subsequent coats on, they're not going to re-raise those fibers because they're kind of bound in the acrylic of the two first coats. I hope you guys get that. I hope I'm explaining that right. So I do a very thin third coat and what I wind up with is a very smooth almost porcelain like finish here. It's nice and I do sand over that to give it a little bit of grit so the tooth comes back. Okay. So then I'm ready for my bright orange and I should only need like one or two thin coats and not have to keep laboring over it. Okay, 
um, for the stem I already painted um, this is one coat of the raw sienna and I think one coat will be fine because by the time um, we're done with it um, we're gonna have shading and all that around it so it doesn't have to be perfect you don't have to have a big solid you know flat thing sometimes you do but usually on this project you're not gonna need that and um, now for the inside since it's black I did not use the undercoating of the buttermilk on it and this is one coat of lamp black and when I do my base coats I use a larger flat brush and I kind of cast off that way around the edges first and that way it keeps my edge nice and clean because the thing with my pieces when these have to seat into it I have to line it up down here there we go you don't want to accumulate too much paint on the edge because it won't push back then so you kind of want to avoid painting this inside edge um, if you get a little bit don't sweat it out it's not going to hurt it but um you know try to keep it as clean as possible this inside edge of your um inside piece okay and um next we're gonna um transfer our design and the, the next thing that i want to point out that's important is when you buy the pieces from me the two-part pieces i always have a tick mark on the back as to how they line up because even though they're circles um, i cut them by hand so they're not perfect and you need to have it line up like this and push it back and then place your pattern on and i push the frame down so that you're sure that your design is straight otherwise if then you can do this pull it up tape your pattern and then you're ready to trace that way you know when you paint it it's not going to be cockeyed you know because it does i'm getting better at cutting so it kind of fits in sideways or you know a little bit and if you start painting when it's like that you're going to be really disappointed if you can't really glue it together and have it seat in there nice so this is how i do it i cut the, the center piece for that after i fit it like that i usually use two pieces of artist tape and what we're going to want to do is use light transfer paper on the black and we're only going to transfer the main lines we're not going to transfer the feather lines you know just the main color lines okay not the dots we're going to wor not worry about the dots till later okay so you could see there's dotted lines here to show the feather lines in that so we're just not going to play with that or the inside of the leaves or anything like that because everything's going to be pretty solid okay so what i will do you don't need to watch me trace is i'll trace this out and then i will be back again and then we'll start painting okay i'm going to do the um the pumpkin part last so we're going to work on just the center for a while okay then i will be right back All right, I'm back. Um, I transferred all of my main lines from the pattern. And as you can see, there's a lot of black space, um, which is fine. I didn't, I didn't do like the double line on the eyes or stuff like that because I just kind of freehand that in when I shade later on in the leaves so um we're just about ready to go with this so our next step is going to be to undercoat and we're going to undercoat the areas that are going to be accepting the metallic paint and what that's going to do is it's going to give this brightness and the shine um if we put it right over the black um it would be quite a bit more dull so we want to undercoat this now since the owl is shaded all in black 
and he's undercoated pretty much you know everything on his body um, we want to do each section separately and I'll show you as I do this and we're gonna just leave a little bit of a gap in between the main lines here and the reason that being is we won't have to retrace the lines with dark and shade and um, I found it doesn't matter because when I shade with the black anyway it all works out nice um, now I like using a soft brush for undercoating because I don't want ridges I don't want to do this thick this is going to take a couple coats probably and the brushes that I really like are the um, Golden Natural Brushes by Silver Brush Company. They're the ones I use. I don't get compensated from Silver Brush, but they have a lot of different beautiful lines of brushes for different needs. And the Golden Naturals are very nice, soft, absorbent bristles. And because they're so soft, they don't leave ridges or that as often. I mean, you can make any brush leave ridges if you use enough paint, but they leave a nice smooth surface. And um, they used to be red handles, but I had just gotten some new ones and now they make them uh, natural wood handles. So these are the same line of brushes. I just wanted to show you the difference of them. So um, I'm going to undercoat everything in the buttermilk paint. And I'll start with a small area. I have my um, wet palette here. It's one of the little Masterson's one with the sponge underneath and the paper's wet. And I keep a little cup of water here and this is kind of my clean water. And then I have a bigger basin of water here and that's for rinsing my brush completely. So if I do float shading or that later on, I like to keep this clean water so that I'm not contaminating it with you know the darker paint so let me show you what I mean by leaving the spaces now you can see it's not going to cover all the way which is fine we don't expect it to I mean that's why we're undercoating it and I added a little bit of water to the paint so it flows and so it will lay flat you know just a damp brush I guess I didn't add water to the paint I guess I just dampened my brush and this is with the acorn um, this is I wanted to point that out too you'll notice I didn't transfer the little cross hatch lines on the top of the acorn because of what we're doing here and what I mean by leaving a space is just like this just go up to it so you can see there's a division And it'll remind you later on where that line is if you don't want to freehand it. You don't have to be fussy with this. This is the nice part of the project. Like even if this undercoating isn't perfectly even, because of the properties of the metallic paints, it's not going to really matter because it's going to refract the light around and you really won't see any difference with it or problem with it. Now see how I kind of just left that little area lighter? Where am I? There we go. I have my sticker so I stay centered for you guys and hopefully not stick my head in there. And just kind of skip around. You know, you're putting a thin layer of paint on. You know, and if you do get too close on an area like that, it's no biggie because when we go back to shade the toes, you're going to know to follow that line. You know, it's not something you have to stress about. That's why I like painting stuff like this. It's easy. So, we're going to do his feet. Okay, and then instead of doing the branch right away, what I think I'll do is skip around and maybe do this area. Do the, one of the big feathers here. Same thing here. I didn't transfer the dotted line that goes down the middle or these little, I don't even think I put these little um, feather lines on the pattern. I could put a couple. 
before I submit it, but um, they're so easy. You'll get them. That's a fun part of painting is, you know, we don't always have to follow patterns completely. And that's what makes it yours, the design. I'm sorry, my voice is froggy today. It's dry, I guess. We haven't had any rain here. Now see if you get a little thick the first time. Just go back. And don't forget, we're going to be shading black around everything. So, you know, this is kind of nice for um, those of you whose hands may be not steady as you'd like them to be. Okay, so you see it's not perfect. This is the first coat, and it's not going to be perfect. And then maybe I'll skip to this. Now this has this, the chest has this little double area in here, like that. And what I did for myself is I just filled it in, and I kind of eyeballed you know, maybe a quarter inch in later, looking at the picture. So I'm going to do that for you guys. Now you could do it either way. You could do it like, as you see when it dries, you can kind of see your line still for the next layer. And see how it, it dried more evenly than what it looks like wet? So you don't want to overwork it. It's almost, I don't want to say this is inky, like a wash. I'm going to use a bigger brush. Hang on. In that area because otherwise we'll be here all day. This is a number six it looks like. Let me look. Yes. This is six. You could use a flat. You could use a filbert. And you can use an angle. Whatever you like. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Yes. Yeah, see now we're making progress. Depends how long you want to take to paint. If you're if you have a good movie on, you might not worry about using a smaller brush. But the bigger brush too, you're going to get less um, ridges and stuff like that because you cover better. See how I'm skipping around? Just skip around the whole design. Now, when I first tried this. I thought I had to undercoat it completely and I, I labored on it and I put like three coats on one of the sections because I wasn't sure how it was going to come out and by the time I tried um, the metallic to see how it would look over this because I played with this first. It was like, geez, what a waste of time that was because I, I really didn't need to do that. And now see like that, I'm just going to, where I traced wrong, I am going to take and then my little mono eraser. This is an eraser and it's really handy. You can get it on Amazon. It's called the Tombow Mono Zero. And it, they have one with a round point and a flat point. And it's like you could click it up like a pen. It's a long eraser in there. And it's great for stuff like this where you want to get little details erased. So anyway, I can't live without that. It's always at my desk. Now where's my brush? Okay. So you see, you're getting the um, idea of this. Now I'm going to go back to this. And I'll do the outer wing first. And then we'll do this the middle one in the middle after. Okay. So we're starting with light coats. And what I think I'm going to do, that's my Coco. She's telling us she went potty. Because... They do that, my kitties. She sounds sad, but she's just she's just fit, talking. There we go. So I'm gonna keep going on this. 
see how that's kind of thin? Now, I want to do an area next to another so you can see. I guess I'll do the branch. It's kind of in between. Okay. And it doesn't have to be even the same opacity. I was thinking of the word. Okay. So you see how I'm doing this. Um, and I'm going to continue to go up. And I will do probably most of the upper half, except I'm going to leave this area. The areas with the dots are going to be left alone. So leaves, there's four leaves, really five up here. The top of the wings and the owl. And then we'll leave the bottom and that. Okay, so the rest will all be pretty much cream or buttermilk. Okay. So I will cut away right now, and then I'll be back when it's done, and we'll show you the next step. Okay, this is what I'm going to call the ugly stage. And the first layer of the undercoating is done. And you could see it's not quite even, but you could still see the the divisions of the wings in that. You can see the divisions of the feathers on the wings and you can see um, all the important parts are separated. And I kind of, I forgot to mention in the other video, I kind of go in the direction that I want with the stroke, even though most of this won't show, but it will change the tone a little bit because what we're going to be doing is kind of glazing over this with the subsequent colors. And this leaf, I, I did a second coat just to show you. You could go darker if you want, but you'll see at the end, we're going to compare the two and see there's not going to be very much difference at all. So I wouldn't labor and redo the whole thing because it's just work for nothing, I think. I think this is going to help us a lot. Now, the next step and the next, um, I guess, steps in the process is to add the color undercoats and what I did on my sample is I undercoated with the basic colors that I wanted the metallics to be but a good example um, well because the metallics are going to be like washes over the um, the color so as I said, they're quite transparent. So we want to put some color underneath them so that they will, you know, in, enhance that color. And they'll show as brilliantly as they do. There will be a nice contrast like this. And you could see, like, I used only two greens here. I used a darker green for the body of the owl and I use sour apple for both the eyes and the leaves and to make the um eyes stand out a little more I also dry brushed with some neon which is what I use for the dots but we'll do that later but as far as the base undercoating um, there's only two greens that are going to be used but you could see even though I use the same metallic over both of these greens they still show through with their true colors underneath so I hope I'm making that clear so I put my paint out on the palette here and I'm gonna take the same brushes I got a little hair in there it looks like oh well we'll just see what it looks like and I'm gonna try my number six again and I'll start back down with the pine cone or the acorn because that's um, kind of a benign thing. And you could see now when I'm painting the acorn, except the hair. Yeah, I don't like it in there. Thank you, kitties, whoever. Anyway, you won't notice it at the end. You could see that by that undercoating, look how nice the paint covers. Even though I'm not putting a thick layer, it's giving nice full 
coverage on it. I'm using a little a damp brush. I dampen my brush and then I, I wipe it a little on my palette. I want you to, whoops. And then just swiping on the color. And you could see that variance of color underneath gives it a little bit of texture. This is like Griselle almost in oil paints where they undercoat in grayscale. So this is certainly not a new technique. It may be new to you or not done a lot with maybe um, acrylic painting. But see, I'll leave that space because we're going we're gonna to float shade that black anyway. As I said, the, the entire um, design will be float shaded in black. So if you notice you're, you're going to be pulling paint off, like see if I overwork it, how I'm pulling it. Leave it alone and go to something else. Also, um, the owl is going to be in the same color. This is honey brown. All that will be in the instructions, though. So we'll start here. And see, we're almost just washing over this now. See how easy this is to do? Now this will take probably, I would put two coats on it, especially if I'm going this thin. And there's more hair. I don't know. With three cats, I don't know why I get so much hair and everything. Again, I wanted this to be relaxing. You know, relaxing doesn't always mean that it works on the first coat, though. It means that what you're doing, you're not worrying about or stressing over. Now see how easy that is? It's just like a little wash. And then we'll do his chest. And you could still see that little line under there, which is kind of good. So I don't know if after the next coat you'll be able to, but we'll keep it there for now. You could always re-pencil it in if you're nervous about losing it. Then when, the, when this coat dries, take your pencil and draw it back in. See, I could still see it, even though the paint's kind of covering there. This is kind of fun to me. I like this kind of painting. Well, all kind of painting is fun. But, you know, it doesn't have to look finished when you're in the first layers. And I think a lot of people get worried. And I think what makes um, design so beautiful is building the layers up and building the designs up. Now see if I work too much, you can see it's moving it around too much. Then I know, I know to leave it alone and move on. So I'm going to go to the other side. Got to look for my kitty sticker there, so I stay in the middle for you guys. The sun's peeking in and out, so I hope that it doesn't goof up my lighting too much. Because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing here. But see how easy this is? You don't need a lot of skill, really. It's the know-how. There we go. And around his eyes are also honey brown. And now see I got a little bit there. Just rinse my brush and pull it off. It'll be green. So we're not going to worry about it. And since everything's going to be floated in black, 
your edges don't have to be that fussy you know take take care of course but the black will cover a lot of um, boo-boos there we go now see how you could still see where to go oops now see I went too far there so I'm just gonna take a wet brush and wiggle it off nobody will know you could hear the cars it's getting late it's about five o'clock so everybody's coming home from work we live right by a highway and it's usually really quiet but this is our rush hour but me being from chicago and commuting for 20 years this is nothing we used to have six lanes of traffic. Crazy. Okay, so that's that's all the honey brown. And I'll do another color. We'll go with the burnt orange, the little footies. So I'll take a smaller brush for that. And the burnt orange is here. And same thing on the footies. We'll cover. And if you see it dragging or getting a lip, just add a little bit of water to your brush. Now see, I'm not even being that fussy here. Just going right over that line. Trying to keep my hand out of the way. Okay. And I'll probably do two coats on this on all of them I mean because you know we want it to look it'll look nice I mean if I didn't I don't think you'd notice but it's so fast that I think I just want to I'm gonna spend this much time on it I might as well right oh and I, as I'm painting here I would like to invite you to join my group um, on Facebook, Let's Paint and Create with Sheila Landry. And um, we'll have a link in the pattern to it probably. And it's a nice place. There's a lot of lovely creative people there. There's no negative stuff. We're all happy and positive and you can show any type of creating. I always emphasize that. It doesn't have to be um doesn't have to be just painting cuz I do needlework and I make jewelry and I do all kinds of stuff. So I like to share it and I like you guys to share because then I feel inspired too. Um, the next thing I'll do the the perch. I think this is country red. This little branch here. I love these autumn colors, don't you? They're so nice. And here in our area, Nova Scotia, we had a very quick summer, and it's already autumn. We had to close the windows today pretty much. Now, see the country red covers, covers a little better. So did the orange. So you may not have to go a couple coats on that. So it depends on how much you have under it. Now see how that was a little bit covered more and you could barely tell the difference between the two and you cannot tell the streakiness really. And by the time you put the metallic on and shade with the black, it will look beautiful. Trust me. Trust me on this. So see, that might only need one coat. So we're doing the same. We're kind of skipping around again. Now I'm going to go back to my bigger brush. And I believe this was Burnt Sienna for his wings. Now, if you left your divisions in there, I would think that... See, now that's a little bit too much water. 
so we blot pick up more paint and it just appears that the burnt sienna is going to take two coats it seems like it's much more transparent so for the first coat i think i'll be lazy and just kind of go over the whole wing area like I said you could use your own discretion see how that glazes and kind of tones it and then the second coat I'll, I'll do it like I did the feet you know just a little bit more careful as long as you're able to see these divisions you'll be okay and I do think, um, you know, if you do lose them, and if you need, just look at the picture. They're so simple. This is such a simple design. I actually was inspired by this design um, by a piece of jewelry that I saw on Pinterest. And it was made in clay. And I hunted down the designer because I would never, ever, ever use a derivative of somebody's design without their permission, because it's not right to do that. And he was so nice. I'm going to have him link in the pattern for him. He does actually clay stuff. He doesn't have anything else like this owl, but I said, can I paint your owl for my pattern and for my class? And he said, he was very nice, the, the um, designer, and I forget his name. Please forgive me. Um, and he gave me permission to do so. Whoops. Now, see, I almost went over the green part because I'm talking. But we'll just pull that off. That's fine. So, um, you know, it's not okay to go to Pinterest and paint something and then say, okay, this is, my, this is mine and I own it. You know, if you copied off of somebody else, this is going to be your lecture part of the series. But it is okay if you find the original designer and they give you permission to use their design. But, there's a but, you still need to give them credit. Because those of you who know me know that my, um, I guess you call it specialty, is realism and wildlife. So I do do some whimsical stuff like this, but um, it's not my strong point. And sometimes I see stuff and, you know, I don't want to take somebody else's work and just change it a little and say, oh, look what I did, you know, because that's not correct to do that. So I'm very grateful that he let me share this design. And um, I have his link information there he does beautiful clay work and he has some workbooks on working with clay and making jewelry and stuff like that now see even though that dried just a little you could see when I went over the second time what a nice layer of coverage it is so we're gonna keep going with this um, I don't want this to be too long I'm gonna add the greens in. I have two greens to do and I'll see, I'll go over the second coat, if that's okay with you guys. And you don't need to watch me do it. And then we'll start working on the metallic parts and the fun parts and start getting close to finishing up, actually, this part. Okay? So I will be back in a little bit again. Okay, we're back, and all of the base coats are done. I show it in the pumpkin here. I'm going to take the frame and put that on the side for now and go back to our centerpiece of our owl. What I wound up doing was putting two coats of paint on. I just thought it looked a little nicer, and it covered better. Um, I don't think it would really matter a lot, but it kind of does, I guess, so... I, I just aired on the safe side and put two thin coats of paint and you can see it's not perfectly solid but that'll be fine you'll see when we start putting the metallics and everything on I also took the leaves um, 
that came with my kit here. These are little um, eighth inch birch leaves and I painted both sides of them the same green as these leaves. So we'll be doing those the same time as well. So the next step, since I consider this being based, the base coats and the undercoats are done, um, the next step will be to float shade. And we're going to float shade everything in black um, for the design because that'll make it look nice and dramatic as we want to. The colors are bright enough where it's going to get a good contrast and the leaves will stand out and everything like that. So um, it's going to be really easy to do. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. Um, but I'll, I'll start you off so you can see how to do it. Now you could see through the base coat where the lines go. But if you wish, you could put your pattern back on and um, trace them in with light colored transfer paper. Again, use the white paper or whatever. A lot of times what I do is print my pattern on translucent vellum that you can get at a stationery store so you could see through so you can kind of place it perfectly. For something like this it's so easy you could probably just draw it in with a pencil but I wanted to show you this little tip. Um, I keep a charcoal pencil or a chalk pencil around because that way if you want to transfer lines on a piece but you don't want them to show up like um, we're going to be floating in black so that shouldn't be a problem but this is something you can do for your other pieces um, you can just draw them in see I could see through there I don't know if you can see that on camera or you can eyeball this of course and what I'm doing is just transferring just giving a little guideline you know you can go as much as you want in between the toes or you know along the big feathers or to show the shoulder feathers here and that and what's nice about the um, chalk or a, this is a charcoal pencil is that as you paint um, the water will remove the line completely so you won't you won't have to worry about it um, showing through later on because I know sometimes that's a problem if you're painting with a light surface and you have the line showing through. Um, so that's a nice thing. It'll give you a guide. So um, you might want to, you know, just think about that for a little bit. Um, and what we're going to do next, I'm going to bring my palette over here. My wet palette. And my clean water, I made sure to change my water so it's nice and clean, even though we're using black. And now I'm using a softer brush again. I'm using the Golden Natural by Silver. And I like to float with an angle shader because it's easier for me to just dip the corner in and spread it on the palette. And then we're just going to start floating everything. And you could start at your acorn down at the bottom because that will um, that'll give you a feel for the paint. Now see if you go too wide, just move it over. This is really an easy project. And again, like you do anything, we're going to be skipping around from area to area. So follow your lines. Same with your um your owl. Whoops, a little bit too much there. See, I like the angler too because whoops, there's a cat hair. That doesn't help, does it? There we go. You could really kind of see what you're doing and turn the brush a little bit to thin your float line. You know, you could move your lines around pretty easily. And what you do if you want to erase the paint is get the brush clean and then use the, the heel of the brush with the clean water. Let's try that again. 
Of course, because I'm on camera, it's not going to always work as great. But what I would do is do my floats and skip around since the whole piece is floated with the same color. Just go from area to area until everything is floated. Okay. Another thing when you float, you don't have to go in one full pull across the area. I do little choppy strokes as you can see and kind of move things as I go. Now I could go down, but I'm going to come over here a little bit to show you how I do the top of the wings. Since I'm right-handed, I want to float this way first and then under it and under it and under it like that. Or switch back and forth. So I'm going to go under this part of the leaf. And you'll have pictures with the patterns too. And see, you're kind of cutting off the corner there, which is what's going to blend it into the background later. Okay? So then you'll go the next level. Now you could let this dry and go around to the other air side first. And then do the first layer of wings. And it doesn't have to be super neat either. That's why I said this is like a real easy project to do. Okay. And I'll skip over to here and do the same. I'm just going to go all the way around there while I'm there. And then, I have a lot of paint on my brush. There we go. And start segment, floating these segments of the wings. And I start by going almost on the chisel edge, and then when you turn it, it gets thicker. And I don't know why I'm putting so much paint. Probably because I'm on camera. But it'll look fine. I trust, trust me. These deep floats will really make it look kind of cool, actually. But if you have too much, like there. See, I could say that's why I'm messing it up. So I could show you how it moves. If you get it quick enough, you could pull it off. There you go. That looks a lot better. Okay, and then by that time we can go back to the other side, or you could do the feet if they're not dry. I'm going to start going here and do the next layer. Okay. We're not worrying about um, we're not worrying about the little lines in the middle yet. That's going to be done last, just so you know. We're only doing like the outlines of the feathers and the wings and the pieces. There will be pictures in your pattern. You guys know I put a, a million pictures in there for you. Okay, so keep going around and go back and forth a little bit. Okay, and um, we're going to do the whole bird this way, all the pieces that are shown here. 
and I will do them off camera so we don't get too long and you do yours and then I will come back okay thanks all right through the magic of video we got all the shading done in black and I also shaded the front and back of the leaf pieces for mine and I used black for that and I did the edges as well for the little leaves that go on the edge so we're all ready to start adding our metallic washes over them I have paint all over my hands um, for adding the metallic washes we want to use a nice soft brush and put thin layers of what I'll call glazing of them and I like the DecoArt Extreme Sheen Metallics they have a beautiful um, line of colors and what I did was I picked similar colors um, for my piece for example I'm going to use the Peridot for both the greens, the green on his body and the green on the leaf. And you'll see because of the undercoating, we're going to get a little bit of a different effect. You will be able to actually see the difference in the colors, but they still both have the same nice metallic sheen to them. I also did the same. Um, I used the copper on the wings and the feet, and I used the garnet on the branch on the bottom and bronze for the owl and the acorn so i put them on my palette this is really easy and once again we're in the home stretch now um, once again i'm going to use soft brushes i'm going to use the golden natural line because i don't want um, my brushes to be too um, thick where i'm going to be pushing paint all over and you want to try when you do this the only thing I'm gonna um, say that's like a rule I guess is try to keep it as much as you can off the matte black because what makes it look nice is a contrast and what I'm gonna do is glaze it and then later on we're gonna you could go over um, your floating very lightly with the black again okay so I'm gonna I'll bring this over here. I don't want to spill it. Once again, I'll start on the acorn because it's like a nice safe thing to do. I'm gonna dampen my brush and pull up a little paint. Now this is very fast and easy. And all I'm gonna do is brush it with a little bit of metallic. Now see when I go over the black, you could still see the black through there. And I'm going to kind of go up to the edges. doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you want it to look nice, but don't be sloppy with it. But same here now. We have this line for the inside of the owl. And I'm just going to wash over it. We're adding a wash is what we're doing. And you don't have to go all the way up into the corners. It's probably better if you don't. Because um, you want those deep corners. That's what gives it that really kind of spooky, you know, contrasted look that I think made this project look so appealing. Now I do, I'm going to just go around the eyes. Oh, I wanted to mention on the inside of the eyes. Wait, let me finish this first and then I'll go there while it's drying. Now see how quick this is? And the reason that it looks so nice and bright on the black background was the undercoatings that we did. Just those quick little layers of undercoatings. Um, in the buttermilk paint or any neutral what it does is it brings the surface to a nice neutral color and it allows the true color of your paint to show through 
because even if paints say they're opaque, they usually aren't fully opaque unless you put a couple of layers on there. Okay. So that's all the brown parts. And see like there, I did touch the black a little bit. I'll do it there. And it, it's not showing up a lot. And as I said, once we finish all our details, we could clean up all these little edges and stuff. You know, you may want to put a little more metallic in the middle like this. Just to make it shine a little bit more. I'm, hope, I'm tilting it a little bit so you could kind of see... Um, you know the shimmer and the effect on it and it's gonna it's gonna look different with um until it's dry I mean it'll it'll dry even there we go see how neat that looks now, I did want to mention about the eyes. Um, what I did on the eyes to really make them kind of stand out and pop was I used some of the DecoArt Black Light Neon paint. Now, the Black Light Neon is a new paint, and it, I do believe it glows in the dark with the black light. You could also use the regular neons. They're just about as bright. I have the orange here. This is what I use for the dots. And you can see they're almost the same intensity of color. So if you haven't, um, I think these came out just this year. And, um, you know, not all the stores have them in that because of COVID and that. So if it's hard to get this, you could just use the regular neons. And all I did was take... Uh, um, a little dome blender and stippled in just in the centers of this eye area like I said this will all be in the instructions as well so you could see that dried or is drying and you could see the nice effect it has on it and what I did for I'm looking for a brush I'm sorry what I did for the chest too is I decided to take a deer foot stippler and some of the garnet some of the red and I just stippled a little of that here and there too and it really kind of brought that warmth in there you go And I kind of dry brush just a little more metallic on the areas. Now I didn't do that on the pine cone, obviously. But you know, you could go back and forth and play with it a little bit, and that made it look really kind of cool. Okay. So you do that with the entire um owl. With the colors that I call for in the pattern. The copper will go on the wings. Again, just, you know, loosely brush them in. Because we're going to put the black details on next. And I also use the copper on his feet, and you could see because it's a transparent paint again, the difference between the two colors, you still see the difference in it. Yet both of them have that nice kind of glow to them. Now you could use this technique with so many different things that you're painting. Um, Instead of just trying to, you know, paint a bright color on a dark surface. Um, I like dark backgrounds. I like dramatic backgrounds. So I do this quite often. And to me, it's always worth the extra time to do these undercoat layers. 
because it looks so nice. See, there's no brush strokes because we did this in layers and every layer we did was a, almost like a wash. It was a nice thin layer. So nothing got chunky, nothing looked messy. It's all really quite easy, as most painting is. If we break it down into little baby steps, it's very easy for us to follow along. And like I said, this type of pattern's really nice for somebody who, you know, maybe, I, I know I have a lot of um, customers in that who say they shake a little, they used to be able to paint. Now see, I put a little too much there. Just wipe it off, pull it out. And it's something that you don't have to be real exacting for. Okay. And the next will be the green. I will rinse my brush. Be sure you shake your um, metallic paints too, I wanted to mention. Now the green, I'm just going to go over everything because it is quite transparent. The metallics tend to separate a bit more because the metal pieces or the um, mica in them is heavy and it likes to separate from the binders that hold it together. Put it over the eyes. And if you get a little on the black, then just we'll go over the black later. Let it dry. Don't smear it all around. And now see it over the deep, the deeper green. I think that was plantation pine. The difference in the effect. Yet it's going to look like a nice cohesive design because you're using few colors. You're not using every color under the rainbow. They're all going to kind of go together. So the, it pulls it all together, the design. Um, one more part of the body. A little much. There we go. And finally, um, we're going to add that little bit of garnet, which is like the red. This is beautiful, too, by the way, on like Christmas ornaments and things. These colors, they're lovely. And there we go. Look how pretty that looks. So we're going to let this dry. And I think I'll only do one more segment because um, I'll just show you how I do the lining on the top of everything because everything else is pretty straightforward. So this was the main technique that I wanted to teach you all today. So I'll be back as soon as this dries and then we'll do our final little segment, okay? All right, everything is dry. Um, they're metal enough for me right now. The next thing I wanna do, we're getting close to the end, is do a shadow around the entire piece. And I waited to put the metallic on for that. Um, and then I'm, gonna, then I'm gonna paint it, I decided. Let me get a paper towel here. And what that will do will set him back a little more. It'll look nicer in that pumpkin. And we're going to just take a wide float. I want to move this so you could see it without my hand being in the way. And again, I'm using a quarter inch angle shader. And I'm putting a decent amount of paint. I started there because the background is black, as you probably figured out. 
and see how it sets the whole scene back and makes it look a little more dimensional. That's why we didn't worry about these edges here very much. I wanted a nice wide float around him. Onto there. Okay, so that kind of frames him. It frames the inside piece. And on the pumpkin here, I used the metallic on this inner beveled edge, and then it looks really nice against the black floated area. So that looks good. Then the last step that I am going to show you is to paint in some of the details of him. Now, on the pattern, there's lines for the top of the acorn, the wing lines, all that will be done with a small brush, um, like a liner. And this time I'm using, you could, you could use, um, these are both silver lines of brushes. The ruby satin is a little bit stiffer, so it's nice for the longer lines. And then for the smaller details, I'm using the um, silver silk. That's like an in-between um, stiffness. So I'm going to wet my brush first, pick up some black paint and that's nice and inky. And then for myself, um, I would not trace these lines on the acorn. I'm going to just start at the end and follow it over. And just kind of eyeball. I'm kind of followed the outside curve here. Followed through with that. And then for the other side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start here and kind of just now see because this brush is a little stiffer this is the monogram liner a number one but it has a nice um nice point on it it holds a good amount of paint because it's a monogram liner but the stiffness in it allows you to get a nice clean line on it. So we're going to add that. We're going to add the little lines on his head. That way they stand out a little. I found that if I did them before I added the metallic, that it kind of washed everything out. And you couldn't see the lines as much. So it's up to you. I mean, you may want them a little more subtle. See how fast this goes? Same with the feathers. You could start at the top. And I don't want to stick my hand in what I just did. You could start at the top and just bring it down. And then little... There's no reason that you should have to trace these lines on. I need a little more water. If it's thick, you get too much. What's nice too is with the metallic, it kind of is gives you a slick surface. So if your paint, uh, if you do mess up, it'll slide right off. You can wipe it down pretty quick. Whoops. I don't want to wreck this just because I'm on camera. You could use probably a shellac-based marker for something like this, too, but I don't think the... I don't think a pen would work as well on the metallic. 
because the metallic paints they almost have a finish in them so they're going to be pretty slick and it's it's going to slide around a lot so you just continue to do that and then all these i put the little lines in here for some details you know just look at your pattern and you could see um, you know what I added in I added a little bit of orange on the wings there to brighten them so you could do that you can just play with it and then um, the last thing I did was dot in random dots in the two neon colors and glitter and the final thing I did was the highlight on the eyes so that's pretty much the project you know the the pumpkin itself is easy to paint it's just your regular color with floating and I used deco arts glamour dust on that it's a very fine glitter and it looks really nice so um, like I said, the main point of my lesson here with you guys today was for the undercoating and the nice effect you get by undercoating pieces and how it makes it easier to get a bright contrast on a dark background by doing undercoating. Okay? So, I'm going to call it a day and I hope that you guys all enjoy the project and I hope you, um, show pictures you can join my group on facebook let's paint and create it with sheila landry um i'll have links for that with the video and you can come to my website if you want to buy some of my wood pieces or see my other patterns or you could go to my youtube and see my other videos okay so i hope you enjoyed this i hope you learned something and let me know what you think about it Take care and happy painting.